In addition to dishonor checks, there are two other types of transactions that affect our cash control systems and specifically our checking accounts. The first is what's considered an electronic funds transfer. Now, an electronic funds transfer is when you have a computerized or an online cash payment. So you're not actually writing a check, but the money is still coming or tied to your checking account. So we do have to make account of this <laughs> and we have to make sure that we keep a record of it on our check stub, which it also is going to go under that other section. And we need to journalize an electronic funds transfer. So if we're paying for something with an electronic funds transfer, it's the same as if we paid in cash. It's the same as if we paid via check, which means our cash is decreasing and that's our credit in our journal. And then what we would debit would be the accounts payable to whoever it is that we're paying or we owe, all right? So they are paying us, we owe them that much money and that would be our debit. And then on our bank reconciliation, when we do this, these would be listed as EFTs under that little service charge box. So let's take a look at what this would look like on our check stub. So if we paid cash on account to Kelson Enterprises for $350 using an electronic funds transfer and memorandum number 10, again, that goes under our other category. So we'd mark it as EFT, it was $350. Then we total up that entire other box, which is 350. And anytime we're paying, that's coming out of our account, so we're subtracting. So 4,972 minus 350 means we only have $4,622 in the bank. We would journalize this just how we always journalize things. So we'll drop our date in September 2nd. We'll put our memorandum number 10 as our doc number. If we pay cash, that's a credit of 350. And as this is worded, paid on account, that's how we know it is a pay accounts payable to Kelson. And because we had a credit, we are debiting accounts payable. The other type of transaction that would affect your checking account is using a debit card. I think a lot of you have these, so you kind of know that this is also a computerized or an online cash payment. You're not actually writing the check, but your debit card is the same thing as if you were writing a check or paying with cash out of that account. So again, it also has to get recognized on our check stub under other, and we also have to journalize it. So if I pay with my debit card, it's the same as if I'm paying with cash. So I'm crediting cash. And then the debit is whatever I'm actually getting. So if I buy supplies with my debit card, I debit supplies. If I buy prepaid insurance with my debit card, I debit prepaid insurance. If I use it to pay for my rent, I debit rent. Whatever I get, I debit. So here's an example. September 5th, I purchased supplies for $24. I used my debit card. On my check stub, this gets denoted under other. So I'll say it's a debit card, it was $24. I'm gonna total up that other box, so I've only spent $24. And then I paid, so I have to subtract the amount in my bank. So 4,972 minus 24 means that in the bank right now, I have $4,948. Journalizing, super simple. We've done this a million times. September 5th for our date, M12 for a doc number. If I'm paying with a debit card, it's the same as paying cash. So cash decreases by $24. If I have a credit, I have to have a debit. And then my debit is what did I get? I got supplies. And that takes care of journalizing both an EFT or a debit card purchase.